everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. So I've got another fun Easter tutorial and this one is, I'm calling it the roll up box. Now the idea has come from Pinterest. It was actually some packaging, but it was considerably different and it was huge. And there was eight sections, whereas I've only got four. And I've added this big belly band as well. So you'd actually look at it and think it just looks like a, you know, quite a nice box and you, the, you know, it could open from the top. But actually you slide this piece off here. So if I just pull that one down, there we go. And this folds flat again, so if you are making these now, you know, you've got a few weeks still before Easter, you can keep them stored away. And then you have this, okay, and these are your four sections. And then all you've got to do is you just undo the Velcro and pull it apart and you have this. And I just absolutely love this. I think it looks awesome. And then you just lift the tops up of each one and you've guessed it two Tunnix tea cakes but you but you you know like I said you can put anything in here so you could maybe have some jewelry in one you might want to put a gift voucher in one sweets in one you know and so on but the whole thing is just it's just really really fun and it's so easy to make and you just fold it all up squish the top and then you pop it in this belly band and the belly band I mean you don't have to have it you can see there you know it does stay together on its own so you don't have to have this option but if you want to decorate it you, you again you can decorate on this but I wouldn't advise you to do too I like don't do any mats and layers I've just done layers because otherwise you start to add too much bulk to all of this so that's why I've just thought the addition of the belly band gives you then that place to be able to do all that decoration if I just bring it up a bit closer I've got a little kind of sign here and then I've used these are one of the coasters the felt coasters again I've shared all this product before and then you've got the little chick and all these eggs and the glittery piece of uh, carrot, piece of carrot, a glittery carrot and I've got some little picket fence there as well and I've just had some fun with it and stuck that bow on. So this is what we're going to make, very easy and yeah I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Okay so I've gone ahead and done three of the four boxes and I've already started to decorate this one as well but you can see there how you know it will, you know, it will come together and I've got all the mats and layers ready, all of this here and there's my little happy so I've just done some heat embossing and popped it on a little wooden stick the stamp set that that one's come from is from the apple blossom it's called springtime sentiments and it yes the happy easter there but you've also got happy mother's day and all kinds of ones so I have been using this one quite a lot because it's just really nice um, fonts so I've yeah like that one and I think this one was really cheap so again, the links will be shared below. The paper pad I'm using is this one here. I'm just finding the colours are really nice actually for Easter, although it is your beach life. <laughs> These here, just really nice. And that's what I've been using, but I've used the stripe there and this one and the bunting, okay? So for today's one, I'm using this lovely blue colour. I'm gonna give the measurements of those later because it's for the belly band, but I just wanna double check something before I do that. So all you need are four pieces that are eight and five eighths of an inch by 11 and a quarter, okay? So along the 11 and a quarter side, you wanna score it two and one eighth, four and a quarter, six and three eighths, eight and a half, and 10 and 5 eighths, okay? And all the measurements will be in my blog as always. Then along the eight and 5 eighths side, you wanna again score it two and 1 eighth, and then six and a half, okay? So you should have, I've just turned it around there, but you'll have this just over half an inch tab at the top, and then all these squares on the sides will be two and 1 eighth of an inch squared, okay? And then you'll have these sections in the middle. So you should have one, two, three, four, five kind of rows, or six, including that little one at the top. Okay, but you want to do that four times. So I'm now going to get rid of the scoreboard, and then you want to fold and burnish all of the score lines. The so next we need to do some cutting. So I'm going to do it so that I've got this smaller tab on my right hand side. And first of all, I'm going to go along here and just cut up all of these score lines just to the first. Okay, so I'm going to go all along this side and then all along that side there. You're just cutting up to that first score line. Okay, so you'll have these two pieces here. You want to remove those completely. Okay, and then you just want to take a small wedge, not a lot, just a small wedge off of the sides because this is going to be the little tab that will slide in to close the box. Okay, 
Then these ones here are going to be your little kind of side tabs just to keep the, you know, just to, well, it's actually to really stop anyone seeing what's inside, but just cut about half of it away, okay? And then on this side, you want to do a heavy kind of wedge, you know, so you almost looks like, you know, the, the, the wing of a plane. You want to go down quite deep and try and get it roughly the same on the other side. Okay, and then just take a smaller, like your normal kind of wedges off of the bottom part there. Don't worry if they're not exactly the same. You, once I put this all together, you'll see why we're doing it and you know, you'll understand it a bit better. But just something so it looks kind of like that. Okay, then flip it around. So all of this is now at the top. These two here we're going to remove completely. And these are actually going to be the connecting pieces to join each box together. So this will actually stick on the side of one of the other boxes. So make sure you, your cutting's really nice and neat because this is all going to be seen. All of this is all going to kind of be disguised, but these ones will be seen. Okay, next you're going to take, we'll keep it over that way, we're going to take little wedges off of these squares here, but not these ones. Leave these completely intact. They're going to be the last ones we stick down, so it means you have a nice finish on the side of your box. Okay, But just so we don't get anything kind of overhanging, it's good to take off a little bit from the other ones. So I'm just cutting just little wedges off of just these two on each side. You're basically just removing bulk, that's all it is. Okay, so I'm just going to lie that down there so you can pause the video if you want to. But basically, you will have the section here where you've removed them. These two here, you just want to take little wedges out of. This one, leave completely intact. And then the top, you will take half off first and then cut the big wedge and just a little one. And then you'll have that tab and just take a little bit off of the sides. But again, I'll just leave it there if you want to just pause that for a second. Okay, next we want to construct it. So we're going to add glue. So I've got the, this kind of tab end in my hand. This middle square, we're going to add some glue onto the top. Now I'm going to use my liquid glue, one, because it's my favourite and it just strengthens everything, but also it does give you that time to wiggle it around if you need to. So you're going to bring this one under this one here and use the square, the perfect square of this one, to get everything nice and lined up. Probably went a bit heavy on the ends there. Just remove that glue. But just make sure that that piece is all stuck down. And then you want to do the same with this one. So make sure the nice square one is lifted up. You're putting it on that middle one. Okay. So you will now have just this piece left and this piece here. Next you want to add glue to this one. And you want to do it on this one as well at the same time because they're both, it's going to kind of go in the same time as, you know, whatever side is you stick down first. So it's best to add the glue now. And then you just kind of want to fold them both in and then in like so. And what I would say, I'm just going to quickly tack that a little bit, but fold these pieces out. And that way you can really see inside the box and you can get everything nice and lined up. And because we've not taken anything off that outer square, you will have that perfect square shape. All right. So now what will happen is this is going to fold in these side pieces. And because this goes in here, if we hadn't have taken off that heavy wedge, it would hit against this. So that's why if you take it off and then that piece will all just slide in. But what I might do and what you might want to do is if you get some... You want a very, very thin piece of ribbon or just a piece of cardstock just to stick on the side here so it sticks out but can fold down. And that way it's almost like a little pull piece for these. So once I put it all together, we can add that at the end, but I'll show you because I think I'm going to do that because I think it will help people be, you know, be able to undo those. But that is what you will have is this box with this flap because that's what we use to attach everything together. But you want to do that four times. Okay, so I've got that one. I've got this one here, so I'm just going to stick that all in. And then I've got these two, which I've already joined together and just started to decorate. So what you want to do is, I'm going to start off with this here. So you will, I've already got those two, and to get those two, you get one of these and you add the glue on this side here and you stick it onto there. But you want to make sure that you're doing it with the ones where they're both opening from the top. 
So you can see both mine open from the top, that is going to stick onto the back of that one. Okay? And that's what that is there. Then you will get this one and you will add it underneath the next one. So I'm going to add my glue. Then all of these open from the top and you're just going to stick it on there. Now what I would say is stick it when you know keep this lying side by side and then you can just lay that back piece down because this is the position that it needs to close up in and you want this to all be really you know flush and nice and neat so it's best to stick it like that rather than like that or with it kind of just like this put them right on top of each other and then you've got a nice kind of surface to be able to you know push down on and make sure everything's kind of flat okay and then Again, this one is facing up the right way, same way that this one is, because that's where we're going to open it in there. That's why I think it's going to be handy to have the little pull pieces. But that this next one is going to stick on there. And you want to just make sure that when it comes out, that it's all you know, joined by the same point. So if you've done this one here, but then you've got the next one coming off here, you've done it wrong. They all need to just work down like this. Okay, so like, don't stick it there, for example, because then you know you've gone wrong. So you, you know you're doing it right if each one is like that and you have that shape. Okay, so another way to explain it, where the lid is on the top, you're sticking to the bottom. Okay, so if you use that as a way of, you know, knowing where to stick, so that's going to the bottom, to wherever the lid is, you stick to the bottom. So again, I'm going to add my glue on this one. So this is where you can keep going. So if you do want to add more, you know, keep adding more, but you need to finish with an even number if you want it to stack, obviously, like I have. And again, because that's on the bottom, I'm going to sit that one like that. It's nice and flush. You can see now when that all goes together, you get that perfect square shape. Okay, so there we will have this. And then the tops of all of these will open. Okay, then you want a piece that's four and three eighths by four and a quarter. And along the four and a quarter side, you want to score it two and one eighth. And then you just want to fold and burnish that score line. And we're going to stick it on this last one here, but it's on the side. So that's where you open it from the top. Rather than sticking on the bottom like we had done before, you're going to stick on this side here. And we're just going to stick it like that. So this side overhangs. And it will just join up with that one on the top. So basically just attaching like a handle really. Put that one on there. And if I just bring it all up, you can see now it just creates that perfect side for this one. That's where we're going to put the Velcro dots. So yeah, I'm just going to keep that one opened up for a minute just so I can make sure it's all stuck down. In the end, you want it to look like you can't see the joins, you know, it's just this continued kind of piece of card, you know, and people are kind of thinking, how have you put all that together? Now, when you go to decorate this, obviously I'm using a directional paper, but it actually is going to work fine on the side pieces. But on these pieces here, can you see they're all going to end up going in different directions? But I'm not too worried because the belly band is going to cover all this. And once it's opened, it will all kind of line up because you can see now they'll all be facing the same way. So just if you are using a directional paper, just bear that in mind, but you might be better off using something like on this one here. It was just all of those, take this one off, it's just that polka dot paper. So it didn't really matter for that one there. So, but next you want to, oh, I just shook that, sorry. Next we want to decorate all of those sides. So for everything inside here, I would suggest just doing one layer because you don't want to add too much bulk to it otherwise it's just not going to close up into that nice square shape so I, I think it was 16 pieces what have we got here two four six eight ten twelve yeah 16 pieces and these all measure one and seven eighths of an inch by four and one eighth of an inch just want to check that it is yeah but you want to make sure when you do your top ones if you're using a directional paper obviously you want it to all face the right way so these ones now I'm going to have coming down on the back that way, but all on the inside, you know, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to stick all of those down first. I'm going to carry it on this way, because if you want, you can hang this. So with that in mind, I've got my bunting all facing the right way here. So I'm going to stick them all down first.
Okay, so I've decorated all inside and all on this side here, but you would have noticed I just took that one off because I have done the top ones. So I'm actually going to cover over that because I stuck that down by mistake, but I've got here a matte and a layer because this isn't part of the box kind of, you know, when it wraps up, so that's not going to create any bulk on the top of it, but I wanted it to match the belly band. So that's why I've done the white. So it's completely optional, you don't have to, but I have done these pieces here. And what were those ones for? Why have I got two lots? Oh, because they're for there as well. I'm going mad. I've cut so many pieces of paper, you can see why. So the white piece is the same size as all of these measurements that I gave you before. So the white was one and seven eighths of an inch by four and one eighth. The pattern paper on top is one and five eighths of an inch by three and seven eighths and you want four pieces of those in that um, with the mats and layers because one is going to go on there that's a little bit tacky so I'm just going to stick that down again it's just how I wanted to decorate it so it's entirely up to you but like I said do mats and layers on the outer pieces so if you wanted to do you know white frame and the pattern on all these outer pieces but don't do them on these inner ones because that extra bulk will mean it will just end up being a, probably a bit like that and it won't close up properly. So I'm going to stick that one there. I'm going to go over that one there. I must have had one that covers it perfectly. Okay, I just ripped off that one underneath and put stuck this one back on top because it just wasn't lining up so it was better to just get rid of it completely. And then you just want to finish off with the squares on the sides because I don't believe I gave those measurements. It's one and seven eighths of an inch squared. So again I'm going to open it up just so I can work in the same direction yeah as I did I mean I'm yeah I'm not worried too much it's it's just a colorful pattern you're not going to really notice it because the belly band is going to cover it all it's just when um, it's opened but I know who I'm giving this to oops is uh, will not notice that at all <laughs> so I'm not too worried when these pieces here you want eight Okay, so I've just gone and cut these pieces here because I'm going to add in just those little pull tabs. This is just some scrap that happens to be three quarters of an inch by one inch. And I'm just going to lift these out and I'm just going to attach just to the, the side of the tab there, just so it sticks out. In fact, I don't want too much sticking out, but it does, it does need to fold over. So what it might be worth doing actually is with your scoreboard is just score halfway down that one inch to so score at half an inch and burnish them actually because yeah it shouldn't add too much bulk we'll soon find out anyway just going to fold all of those and then I'm going to use my quick dry glue here I'm just going to cover the inside of one of those half inch pieces pop it in the middle of this so it's it's coming over the side there and then close that up but now they have that pull tab and they will know they will naturally go and pull that. I don't want to pull it yet because it's obviously still drying but I'm just going to go and add those in okay I'm really pleased with that I think it looks really good so now loads easier all right, so I definitely recommend that you do that. I mean, if it won't dip in once your stuff's in there because the Tunnix Tea Cakes will stop that happening for me anyway. But now when I bring it all around, yeah, it's not created, you know, that much bulk. And because it's in the centres anyway, you wouldn't really see it on the sides. So now I'm going to add my Velcro dots. So again, I'm using the Velcro brand. These are linked on my Amazon store. And these are the, it's either 12 or 13 mil. I'm just going to use two sets. You could have one big one, but I'm going to pop one there and one there, and then just make sure it lines up and just really squeeze them together. Okay, so there is your box. Now, if you want to keep it like that, you can. It does look really nice, but I do want to add that belly band and I want to do all that really lovely Easter decoration. So, what I've got is 
I'm going to cut these down a bit. That's what I wanted to check first. So let me just do all of that. Okay, so you do want to have one piece definitely that's four and a quarter by 12. And you want to score along the 12 at half an inch. Okay. The other side I'm going to trim and I'll tell you what you need in a minute. But I'm going to just add some glue on this half inch tab. Don't fold and burnish it. It's really just a guide. But I just, you know, rather than getting a pencil out and stuff, you might as well just score. And you just want to stick that over the top, making sure it all lines up. Because we've got four inch sides here, 12 inches isn't obviously long enough. So you need to stick them together. And um, I just end up trimming it a little bit off of one of, you know, this other piece, but I'll give you that measurement. But it will be four and a quarter. And then what I've done, rather than doing those sixteenth of an inch score lines and all that kind of faff, if you lay this piece on the back of your box, okay, so choose a front, and you're going to have this on the back with the join right in the middle. Hold it in place and lie it down, okay, and then bring up the side and just push against it so you get a nice fold, okay, and then come all the way around and again just make sure all the card is running nice and flush against the box and just burnish and then this last one bring it down like so and then I'm going to bring up this one again really push it against there and bring it up to here and then I'm just going to grab a pencil if you want to do it like I just have then you'll want two pieces that are four and a quarter by twelve but I'm now just going to put a little pencil mark just a little bit under there and now I'm going to take the whole thing off and grab my scoreboard flip it over and I'm going to get, line up these folds on a, any of the tracks and now score them. And it's much easier to do that than to do all that kind of in-between scoring So that's what it will be. So I'm just literally just picking any track and getting nice score lines. And that way you know your belly band's going to fit really tight. Oh actually that's the one I need to, oh no where's the pencil line? Oh just got some hot glue on that. Oh, it's inside here. I'll be trimming that away anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then with that, where I put the pencil mark, I'm just going to cut that piece off. So if you want to have it exact and you don't want to waste 12 by 12, then that piece there is six and seven eighths of an inch by four and a quarter. Okay, so I will put all that measurement in my blog. But now just go around and fold and burnish those score lines. So I just think that's a little bit of an easier way, oh don't do that back one, that's a, an easier way to do it. So, you know, whatever works for you. I always just wrap my belly bands around, I never, you know, score them properly. But now we just need to join that up, but I would do it when it's wrapped around, not before, because I just think it's easier. So again, I'm going to wrap all that around and you'll see now that that is going to join up perfectly like so, and then we've got our mats and layers to go over it, but you've got a really nice snug belly band. That's popping out a bit there because I went to fold that score line, but it's fine. Okay, so with it still on there, I'm just gonna pop some glue on here, and then just bring that up, keeping everything nice and straight. You can see there, lines up perfectly. Okay, really pleased with that. Okay, so I've got these here, but you'll want two pieces of white, if you're doing it like me, that are four by three and seven eighths, and then two pattern pieces that are three and three quarters by three and five eighths. And they're for the side pieces. And then for the front and back, you will want two pieces of white that are four and one eighth by three and seven eighths, and then two pattern pieces that are three and seven eighths by three and five eighths. I will write all that down in my blog, okay? But yeah, it's, so they're just, they're more, they're just ever so slightly more rectangular, more rectangular than they are square. So I'm gonna stick all of these down and then I've got my hot glue gun, which has been on for a while now, ready to just do a little bit of decoration on the front. Okay, so now we're going to decorate it. So 
I had the picket fence on that one because it was a bit of scrap, but I don't want to just cut into the fence just for that tiny bit, so I'm not going to add it on this one. But I've got, this is one of those coasters. These were from the pound shop. Again, hopefully this is all still in there, but um, it does always tend to sell out quite quickly. So I'm just using my hot glue gum, and I'm just going to stick this one down. Make sure, yep, I'm on the front. And it's just going to come off slightly down to the more of the right hand corner there, like so. I've got yellow ribbon I'm going to do on this one because I think it, you know, yellow and the blue go really nice together. And then I've just got a few of the, you know, all those bits I've been collecting. So I'm just going to have the carrot on there. And then I'm going to add a little blue one just down in the corner there and just start building a little seam with whatever it is that you've got you might be just doing a nice you know stamp sentiment in the middle there but I you know you know me I always go over the top I've got these little chicks here which were actually from last year because the ones that I the small ones I saw this year I thought were really rubbish so but these ones were okay so I'm going to use that one and yeah just have a bit of fun and get this all decorated So there is my finished box. I put some yellow tinsel on this one, which again, I shared in one of my What Did I Get videos, just because I didn't have the picket fence on that one, it did need something else. But I'm really, really pleased with this one. And I've also got the yellow ribbon instead of the pink on this one as well, because again, I just think that works really nicely with the blue. So to get into it, and that's the nice thing about it, is you don't have to undo that bow or anything. So just take off the belly band, so whatever way, you know, will work best, like so. And then you just undo this and out pop all of your boxes. It opens the right way up as well. And then you've just got your little pulleys there to open up all of your compartments. And I just love it. So yeah, you can fit eight Tunnix tea cakes <laughs> or you can fill it with Lindor chocolates. You know, I've, I've got lots of little Easter chocolates that may well go in here as well. I just think it's a lot of fun and once you have put stuff in there if your box lids are kind of dipping like that one seems to want to dip down these ones are not too bad but once you've got stuff in there that won't happen anyway and then it just all folds up I like using velcro I don't I very rarely use magnets unless it's on like a mini album or more of a, a real special like gift you know keepsake box or something I just think velcro is fine and that way you know if you're giving it to children and stuff they're going to be okay so yeah I absolutely love these. I think they are brilliant. I'm so chuffed. Cannot wait. The best bit now is giving them to someone as well. So I know they're going to enjoy them. And they hold quite a bit of weight as well because because of the way it's constructed and it, that it's all wrapped up on itself. You probably could get, I don't know how tall a miniature is. I haven't actually got anything on hand at the minute, but you might be able to get a little miniature in there. I've got a feeling it might be a little bit small, but it's another idea anyway. And, um, you know, or some nice little, the little um, candles that you can get. So I think they are fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it's given you lots of inspiration. Can't wait to see your versions of this because this is again something that can be adapted for many occasions. This is going to be a great one for Christmas and um, you can hang it as well if you wanted to you know, change the way that I've kind of put it together at the top there. So yeah, there you have it. So thank you very much for watching. As always, if you have enjoyed today, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing so you get to see more of the Easter series and all of the other many tutorials that will be coming. So thanks a lot. Bye.